welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how the industry produces ethanol from sugarcane, and we summarized the procedure that would be carried out to make that happen. In this video, we're going to cover a first-hand investigation you would have covered in class. So first-hand investigation is your prac, and we're going to go and go cover the purpose, the equipment, the method, and the conclusion. So I'll read the actual dot point. It says, solve problems, plan, and perform a first-hand investigation to carry out the fermentation of glucose and monitor mass changes. So there's two parts. First, we had to carry out the fermentation, and also we had to monitor the mass changes. So the purpose, so here over here, I've got the purpose. The purpose was to observe the fermentation of glucose. And one of the reasons why is because it's always to sort of see it yourself. Um, it helps to visualize it by being able to do experiments. It's a hands-on kind of thing. And we talk about fermentation quite a bit in this chapter. That's the reason why we would have done that experiment. And another reason was to monitor the changes in weight. If we produce, if we have glucose and we produce ethanol, we also have produced carbon dioxide. And when we lose that, we actually um, also lose CO2 molecules. So these CO2 molecules are lost because they're gas and they escape, which means that the beforehand has is lighter than the afterwards. So the reactants are lighter than the products, and you would have done that experiment as well. I'm going to cover all that, and I'm actually going to cover that in an animation. So by the end of this, we have an animation. Um, the equipments. Now, for the equipments, this is what you would have had. A beaker with warm water, and the reason why is because sort of yeast works best at about 37 degrees Celsius. You would have had your conical flask. This is where you had your glucose and your yeast inside, glucose plus yeast. You'd have had a stop and rubber, rubber tube to uh, not allow oxygen to enter because oxygen can make sure that the yeast doesn't work, so we don't have any oxygen entering, so that rubber tube prevents oxygen to, prevent to enter. We've got a beaker with lime water that's for to test for CO2, I'm going to go over all this in animation, so if this doesn't make any sense yet, it'll make sense hopefully in a second. Scale and balance, that was to monitor changes. And we also had our dried yeast. And that's usually baker's yeast. In most cases, that's baker's yeast. And that allows us to ferment. And glucose was obviously the thing that was being fermented by the yeast. So this is our equipment, the equipment we would have had, and the reasons why we would have used that equipment. And now we've got the, here on this side, we've got the animation itself. So we've got, before we start, I want to make sure we label all these things correctly. So here we've got, um, right here, we have our flask. Right here we have glucose. These are the glucose solution particles here. We have our yeast on the bottom. And again, that would usually be baker's yeast. We have a warm beaker of water here. So then that would be about 37 degrees. So warm water in that beaker, 37 degrees Celsius. And we have our lime water right there. And a couple of things that I haven't um, actually changed yet is this is here is our enzyme. So this enzyme will be produced by the yeast. So I'm going to remove it soon. It's actually going to come from the yeast itself. And this here will go, will all be happening in a second. So what happens first, what we have to do first is we have to put the glucose and the yeast into our flask. Right? So we put the glucose and the yeast into our flask. And before we start, we want to make sure we actually weigh the flask, right? Because to monitor changes, we need to know how much weighs beforehand and afterwards. So we take the flask and weigh it. Once we've weighed it, we put it back in. Make sure you don't forget to put the stopper on. So the stopper makes sure there's no oxygen that comes in. So our stopper is on. Then make sure you have no oxygen coming in or out. And then what we do is we just wait a while. And as soon as this happens, we have got the right conditions for fermentations to happen. So this yeast will actually produce the, the enzyme I mentioned earlier. So the enzyme was called zymase. And so you can see that the enzyme itself is now in the yeast. 
And what the enzyme does, it, it breaks glucose, it breaks these glucose molecules, which are in solution. It breaks it down into four other smaller molecules. So two ethanols, which are these blue ones, dark blue ones, and two carbon dioxide molecules. And the ethanol will just swim in the water, whereas the carbon dioxide molecules will actually leave through that tubing, and it will go into the lime water through that tubing. And when they're in lime water, they're actually going to turn that lime water purple. Not purple, <laughs> but white. And it will happen a couple of times. And then what you'll do is after half an hour or, so, or an hour, you'll take everything out, remove the stopper, take everything out, and then put it back on the scale and sort of look at the changes, if it's changed at all. And if it's changed, that means you've lost something, which makes sense because these carbon dioxide molecules have constantly moved over and we've lost these carbon dioxide molecules. Right? So that was your experiment you would have done. And this enzyme is important that's produced by the yeast, and these glucose molecules were fermented. And to, they produced ethanol and carbon dioxide, and the carbon dioxide was lost. So the mass changes were from the carbon dioxide that was lost. So to summarize the experiment, our conclusion was that, first of all, fermentation happened under the right conditions, if we had the right temperature and we had an enzyme present, a yeast present and the solution present um, at right conditions. So if we didn't have those right conditions, ideal conditions, if we didn't have them, it wouldn't have happened. But because we had them, everything was fine. We also noticed, we noticed some changes. So we noticed changes in mass, noticed changes in mass. And the reason why there were changes is because here this is a glucose molecule. So down here we've got a glucose molecule. And this glucose molecule weighs by itself. If we count, so here we have this here. We've got a carbons weighing 12 gram or 12 atomic mass units per carbon, hydrogen 1 and oxygen 16. If we count all these up, 6 carbons, 6 times 12, 1 times 12 hydrogens, and 16 grams per oxygen, so 6 times 16, that glucose weighs exactly 100, roughly 180 AMU, or one mole will be 180 grams. Now, we produce two of these, so we produce ethanol and carbon dioxide, and two carbon dioxide, the ones, the stuff we lose, so this is the carbon, this is the ethanol here, and this is the carbon dioxide here, so carbon dioxide, and we lose two of them. So overall, those two, if we count them again, two carbons, because we've got two of them, is two times 12. Four oxygen, because we've got two of the CO2s, that's four times 16. Overall, that's 88 grams, or 88 atomic mass units. So we start with 180, but if we ferment it, we lose 88 of those 180, and we've got leftover is what we have here in ethanol. So that's why we would have noticed those changes in mass. So I hope that was useful. If you want to go over that animation, you can go over it again. But yeah, I hope that was useful.